Hi, my name is Tammy French. Today I'm going to be talking about Chapter 5 called Selecting Topic and Purpose out of the textbook The Art of Public Speaking. If you'd like to watch this entire presentation with closed captioning, please visit the Communicate submenu on the UWW-TV website at uwwtv.org. So let's start with the first part, selecting a topic. Some students tell me that in COM 110, this is the hardest part of all of our assignments, is trying to find a topic. But you know what? I hope you look at this as a great opportunity. This is a chance for you to talk about pretty much anything you want to talk about. And this is a great, a great chance for you to be able to think about things that you like, things that are meaningful to you, things that you value, things that you care about, things that you are interested in. This is a chance for you to open up. Now, what if you can't think of anything, despite everything I just said? Well, then we en enter into a process called brainstorming. I'm sure you've talked about brainstorming plenty of times in other classes, right, where you're just trying to come up with different ideas. And there's lots of different techniques of having a blank piece of paper in front of you and so forth. And I'm all for that, absolutely. But I think there's a couple tips I can give you as well if, if that's still not helping and you're still looking for that topic. First of all, consider different kinds of current events. So whether you go to um, your, your Yahoo account online and you, you kind of look at what news feed items pop up, whether you check out our Royal Purple and see what's in there, whether you turn on the TV or listen to the radio or something, what are some, some things going on in our world that might be kind of interesting to people? What are some fresh perspectives on perhaps some old topics? That's one place to start. Another place that is one of my personal favorite avenues for you to check if you're looking for a topic is talk to people that are close to you, whether it's your family, your friends, your roommates, significant others. These people know you. And so if you go to them and you say, hey, I've got this informative speech assignment in my favorite class, COM 110, because that's what you would say, and I've got to come up with a topic, but I can't think of anything. Sometimes putting their brains to work can be really, really useful. So they can remind you, for example, of, oh, I don't know, maybe a trip you took when you were younger and you really found this place that you went really interesting and they can remind you of that. Or maybe if it's a friend here at school, that friend can remind you of two semesters ago when you had this class and you had to write this big paper in this class and that topic of that paper was so interesting. Can you manipulate that topic to fit this speech assignment? Our friends and our family can be really, really helpful, so don't be afraid to reach out to them. I think that one of the more common areas that students turn to when they're looking for a topic is to go online and they'll type in www.informativespeechtopic.com and I think that's okay. I, 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 Utilize all the resources you have, but what can happen is you might find topics that you don't have any personal connection to. You don't have any maybe experience with it. You don't have any particular attitude towards it. And as a result, it may not be as meaningful and then it may be more work. So let me use my son as an example. My son, who actually just graduated from college last semester, so thankfully that all went well. But when he was in high school, he actually had a speech class and he had to come up with an informative speech topic. Now, some people might go to their mother who teaches a class in it and ask for help, but not my son. He decided to, I don't know, think of something on his own or try to, and he kept procrastinating finding a topic until finally one day his teacher said, Nicholas, you need a topic today. So he did what any red-blooded, I guess, 
kid would do. And he went to his, his phone or his computer and he typed in what I just said. And one of the first things that came up that for some reason grabbed him was, and again, you can picture him looking at an alphabetical list, is aquaponics. Aquaponics. I didn't know this until I heard his speech, but aquaponics, as I understand it at least, is farming, is aquatic farming. So farming, I guess, fruits and vegetables and plants in seawater. And of course, in island countries, this is a very great technology to use. My son doesn't necessarily know anything about aquaponics or farming for that matter. Now, I'm sure some of you are maybe biology majors or botany enthusiasts. This would be a great topic for you. But this was a really kind of illogical choice for my son. But he forged ahead and signed up for aquaponics. So as a result, as he's doing his work and, and doing his research for it, because he had no ties to this topic, he hated his topic. And as a result, just kept kind of pushing it off and not working on it until waited to the last minute to turn in the outline. And then practicing the speech became such a chore that he really didn't want to practice it. We don't want to do things we're not interested in. So the bad topic choice hit him in a couple ways. Number one, he just wasn't very enthusiastic. And number two, because of that, it really urged him or, or aided his procrastination and therefore, you know, just the not perhaps as great of a grade as he might have gotten had he picked a different topic that he did like. So that's a really long-winded story of way of saying, please don't make that mistake. Pick something that you know a little bit about, you are interested in, and that maybe you have a little background with. Now, once we have a topic, even if maybe we're not 100% sold on it, we want to think a little bit about the general purpose of the speech. What are some of the things that we want to do with this speech? Now, let's exit our COM 110 discussion for a minute and pretend, again, we're sort of out in the real world. We know that when we have total control over our speech, we might be able to decide, am I going to inform on this topic, persuade people to a topic, or really just be sort of charming and interesting and just entertain people? In COM 110, we have made that decision for you. Uh, this next speech, of course, is going to be informative, and your last speech of the semester is going to be persuasive. We've already decided that. Now, don't misunderstand, please. It doesn't mean that you can't also include some entertainment in your speech. You can tell some jokes and things as long as they're appropriate and relevant to your topic and so on. But it does mean that the main goal you have, the main purpose, is one of these three things. And it's really important to think of your main purpose because, of course, you wouldn't want to mess that up. You wouldn't want to go into a situation, maybe when you're a professional, and walk into a meeting where you think your job is to persuade people, perhaps to look favorably upon your organization and really they really just invited you to speak because they just wanted to in, be informed about what your organization does and, and understand your organization better. So have the purpose clearly in mind once we thought of the topic. But then we get to one of the fun parts and that is coming up with our central idea or our thesis. These two words are, are interchangeable. The central idea or the thesis is the main idea of your speech. It's kind of like if, if somebody would stop you in the hallway and say, hey, I know you've got that informative speech coming up. What's your topic? And you say, well, uh, my topic is the three ways that aquaponics is going to revolutionize farming. Okay, if you had to say your topic in one sentence, what would it be? And that is your, your central idea or your thesis. It is a one sentence statement. Every now and then we have a student that has a paragraph long thesis or something and that's way too, too complex. We want your thesis to be really, really simple and, and to just be something that is, is easily grasped by the audience. So let's talk a little bit about how we can make the best central idea possible. And again, in, in trying to underscore the importance of this central idea or how critical it is to have a good one, it's almost like if you think of maybe a big old maple tree, the central idea is that big trunk. It is supporting everything that's on top of that tree. So we have to make sure the trunk of that tree is stable, it's secure, it's firm, and it's got exactly what it, what it needs in it. It's, it's really, really um, strong, strong enough to support the rest of the tree. And in that same way, our central idea is a critically important piece of your, of your speech, so we want to write it correctly. So to that end, there's a couple guidelines we have for writing a good central idea. First of all, 
as I kind of alluded to before, make sure it's a full sentence. And to that end, it shouldn't be a phrase. It shouldn't be an incomplete sentence. It should be one full sentence with a capital and a period and everything else. We also want to make sure you don't express it as a question. It shouldn't be, what is the role of aquaponics, question mark. It should instead be more of a statement, okay? We want to make sure that our central idea is uh, very specific and not at all vague or using some kind of figurative language, something that the audience could take in a couple different ways or is maybe uncertain. We want it to be really as specific as possible. And one more thing, and this is really particular for our class, but we want you to use the number, a, a number in your central idea. And in this case, we want you to use the number three, all right? That, the reasoning for that is going to become clear in just a little bit, but, and I'll explain that in a little more detail soon. But we want you to use a number, and that relates back to that idea of being as specific as we can. So let's take a look at a couple statements and see what's wrong with these statements, okay? Problems of fab diets. What's wrong with that statement? Okay. How about, what are nanorobots? Given the parameters I mentioned before, what's wrong with that statement? And this last one, Costa Rica is an awesome place for a vacation. Hmm, how about that one? Well, there's something wrong with each of them, and I hope as you're playing along at home, you can, you can guess some of these. First of all, with the problems of fad diets, it's an incomplete sentence. It's a phrase, and we want you to have a full sentence. Next, with what are nanorobots, well, quite obviously, that is a question, and we don't want you to have a question in there. We want you to have a full sentence and, and, and not be asking your audience what the thesis is. And then as far as Costa Rica being an awesome place to visit, that word awesome is the problem. That is, again, kind of a figurative word. And frankly, for all three of them, none of them use the number. They don't use any number at all. So if these were my topics, if I had fad diets and nanorobots and Costa Rica, those were my topics, what could I do to make them better? Let's take a look. Fad diets can lead to significant, three significant health problems. We've got the number three, full complete sentence. It's really succinct and it's very specific. Nanorobots will improve healthcare in three ways. Same kind of thing. We've got everything we need in there. Full sentence, the number three, nice and tight. And then there are three attractions in Costa Rica that tourists regularly visit. If I, maybe I took a trip to Costa Rica at some point and I wanna make sure that my audience can understand three places that are really significant in Costa Rica and I can then hit on those. So there's, there's ways we can definitely clean up a, a central idea if we're having a problem with it. Again, I wanna emphasize your central idea, your thesis is a, just a critical part. And so it's, it's important we start off by getting that uh, nice and clear in there. And definitely any of your teachers can help you with that as, as you are working on that. So now let's take it from there. So we've got our topic, we definitely know our purpose, and we've got our central idea. Now let's start just the beginnings of how to format our outline. So here's a sample outline. I've got my central idea. There are three major races in alpine skiing. The reason we're using the number three, and I bet some of you have guessed this by now, is because that's how many main points we're going to have. That's going to lead very, very nicely into our preview statement, which in this case, they are downhill, slalom, and giant slalom. So it's pretty obvious that my main points are downhill, slalom, and giant slalom. Brilliant, right? And by using that number three in my thesis, my audience is getting a little bit of a hint as to what's coming. It's gonna be very, very helpful for my audience to be very clear on what they need to listen for. How many main ideas are there within, within my speech? So now that I've got my main ideas, downhill, slalom, and giant slalom, I can definitely work in, right into my main points. The first major race in alpine skiing is the downhill. The second major race is the slalom. The third major race is the giant slalom. Wow, I have the skeletal outline already started. And all I did was I started with a really strong and stable thesis statement. And the rest just sort of fell into place. Now, of course, I can manipulate my thesis statement as I need if I choose to maybe highlight a different part of skiing or a different part of my topic, but this is a really nice and easy way for this to come together, okay? Now, I want you to work at home for just a minute. First of all, pick one of these topics. Do any of these topics appeal to you? NFL football, Halloween, J-Lo, Golden Retrievers, pick one. And I want you 
once you've mentally picked one, to develop the following, a thesis statement, a preview statement, and three main points. So just take a moment right now and think, okay, if I was gonna do my topic on JLo, how might I structure this? What might my thesis be? So I had the number in there, and it's a complete sentence, and it's not using vague words. And then once I've got that number, what would my preview be? Where I explain briefly in one sentence what my three main points are, and then of course my main points would fall right into place, okay? Well, maybe for example, I would pick golden retrievers. Maybe I would say, there are three important considerations one should have when raising a golden retriever. Okay. The three considerations are feeding, grooming, and playtime. That's my preview. And then to get to my main points, I'd say the first consideration should be appropriate food for my dog. The second consideration should be, how do I groom my dog? Or what should I do to groom my dog? And the third consideration should be, what are some playtime activities that would be great for, for my dog? We've got it, we've got it started. And hopefully you can see how easy this can come together. So use this as a little bit of a challenge for yourself to be able to start to think about some topics, start to think about what kinds of things do I like? And if you can't think of something, talk to your, your friends, your family, and come up with some great topics. Once you've done that, mentally start to think about, hmm, how could I divide this topic into three parts? Now I have to warn you, you wanna make your topic as, as narrow as you can. One of the suggested topics I gave you just a moment ago was NFL football. I'll level with you. NFL football would be a terrible topic because it's gigantic, right? It's huge. It's just a huge topic. It'd be much better for you to pick one of your favorite teams or one of your favorite players or maybe your favorite positions. There are three things a person should know about the cornerback position. Now that is a nice narrow topic. So if you've thought of a broad topic that you like, consider ways to narrow it down. That'll make your speech even more interesting. So this wraps up chapter five on considering your, your topic and your purpose. Uh, definitely this is a great place to start to really get going with that informative speech and start thinking about the ways to go. And certainly you can talk to your teachers if you're having questions. As a reminder, if you want to watch this entire presentation with closed captioning, please visit the Communicate submenu on the UWW-TV website at uwwtv.org. Thank you.